2024 has already been an action-packed year for video games in the Nintendo Switch and RPG space, but there is a lot more that I'm excited about for the rest of this year. And in this video, we're going to be counting down the top 16 most exciting games that I'm looking forward to that I think a lot of you guys will also enjoy as well if you like RPGs, Nintendo Switch games, and more. But before we get into that, what's good everyone? OJ here. Welcome back to another video. Please make sure you hit that like button, subscribe if you are someone new, and click that notification bell to get my Nintendo Switch, RPG, PS5 videos, and more first. And let's go ahead and get right into it here starting off number 16 let's talk about saga emerald beyond that's coming out for a smorgasbord of systems and even ios and android so that's coming out on april 25th 2024 and the game says you can forge your own tale the latest standalone entry in the saga franchise saga emerald beyond brings together the very best elements of the beloved series to offer each player their own unique gameplay experience and yeah i'm really looking Looking forward to this one because I played the Saga games on the Nintendo Switch. This is an old school RPG franchise, and they really haven't done anything this big, like in the history of the franchise. So I'm really excited to kind of get into it, see the different paths, play the game. Traditional old school RPGs with a nice new type of twist in there with multiple paths is always a game that I want to check out at least. So I'm looking forward to Saga emerald beyond but let's go ahead and get into number 15 here let's talk about something that i've never talked about much on this site except for live streams and that is a black myth wukong this game is becoming more and more appealing every single time somebody shows me a clip or i see a video or i watch a trailer august 20th black myth wukong is an action rpg rooted in chinese mythology the famed story you guys all know it dragon ball z is also based off of it as well and you set out as the destined one to venture into the challenges and marvels ahead to uncover the obscure truth beneath the veil of the glorious legend from the past so what i like about this game is that one visually it looks really cool but of course the story and what they're trying to set up and how it is i just think that it's a dope story we've seen it told over and over in various different types of media but i think that this is one of the best representations in terms of video games that i've seen so far and i like the fact that it's going to be challenging it's going to be a souls type of game but it's a souls type of game that's more my speed and my style because i'm not really into souls as much anymore wasn't huge into elden ring and all of that and that slower pace of gameplay but this one seems a bit faster and it's definitely more of my aesthetics in terms of what i want from a game so i'm looking forward to black myth wukong coming out august 20th next up at number 14 is a game that i call the african dread and it's called tales of kenzura zao it's coming out for a multitude of systems april 23rd 2024 and in this game you wield the dance of the shaman reclaim your father's spirit brave the beautiful and treacherous land kenzura with the god of death in tales of kenzura zao a metroidvania style adventure crafted by surgeon studios published by ea one of the originals we saw what happened with the dude that came out on stage in terms of his emotional type of presentation for this game and i love to see what they're doing one because i am a huge fan of metroid dread i love the gameplay prince of persia the newest one that just came out that game's awesome metroid dread is great hollow night this game is styled in the same type of way and there is a demo and i've checked out the game myself and i think that it's really smooth it looks great the animations are good the music is good i just love everything that they're doing with this game so far so i'm looking forward to the full release this april and yeah it's going to be a wild ride playing this on my nintendo switch anyway so i'm gonna enjoy it so it's looking like it could be next in line when it comes to great metroidvania games out there for people to play all right, next up at number 13 is Pepper Grinder. Pepper Grinder is pretty much out by the time that you are watching this video. So this is an action packed 2d adventure blending traditional platforming with an alternate drilling mode that allows you to dive in and out of the earth like a dolphin swims through water and that was one of the most appealing things about the game to me when i played the demo now i already thought it looked good when i first saw it, and i really like what i'm seeing the price is good on there too i think that it's going to be a ton of fun you're a pirate in this 
game as well. So you collect treasures, you can power up Pepper, you can get different abilities, be able to access different areas that you wouldn't have been able to access beforehand. And you have these stupid enemies that you have to go around and get back your treasure that was stolen from you. So I think overall, it looks good. It runs good. It was a cool demo on the eShop you can play. It's a good price for the game. Pepper Grinder, absolutely one of those games to look forward to if you haven't checked it out yet. Or of course, if you're playing it, let me know what you think about it in the comment section. Next up at number 12, Luigi's Mansion 2 HD. Coming out June 27th, 2024, explore multiple haunted mansions with Luigi and his ghost hunting Poltergust 5000. Now you can progress through diverse missions to retrieve the missing shards of the dark moon scattered across several distinct haunted mansions each with their own puzzles to solve and ghosts to capture for a high rating by using your superpower ghost hunting tool, the Poltergust 5000, to suck up ghosts and window curtains and blow air to search every nook and cranny of the chilling yet charming mansions. And this game also features multiplayer online. It was the first in the series to do so. A lot of you guys have probably played Luigi's Mansion 3 and maybe not played this game because this game is stuck on the Nintendo 3DS and no other system. So I like the fact that they're bringing it over. I'm always a fan of bringing over old games that are stuck on on platforms that are no longer supported at all so this is definitely a good thing and some people see it as maybe not the best luigi's mansion and i completely understand that there's only three main luigi's mansions anyway but at the same time i think that it's a fun game to bring over and i think it's fun with friends as well to play multiplayer and the gameplay is still super smooth it looks great looked great on the 3ds looks even better on the nintendo switch and it still has that classic luigi's mansion fun gameplay of sucking up ghosts and the puzzles and all of that so i'm looking forward to checking it out and how much better it looks and controls on the nintendo switch over the nintendo 3ds which is a cool system for what it was at the time but definitely a bit rough on the eyes overall when you're looking at it so luigi's mansion 2 hd june 27th next up at number 11 fantasy life i the girl who steals time? A lot of you guys have been telling me, OJ, you gotta check out this game. If you like certain aspects of Animal Crossing and you like RPGs, you're going to like this game. October 10th, 2024, we finally have a release date for this one. So I said, okay, I'll check it out more. It was at the Nintendo Direct, but I actually looked into Fantasy Life and yes, Fantasy Life is absolutely right up my alley. Now I need to still play the game and see how it is. But based off of what they're talking about here, it looks like it's going to be a game that I'll really enjoy. And a lot of you guys might want to check out if you've never played a fantasy life game before. So you can begin a fantasy life on a ruined island and embark on a great adventure into the past. Gather friends, craft and build your own city. A completely new entry in the Fantasy Life series. You can build your own city and go on adventures within a new island. Now, you can explore the island with whatever life or occupation that suits you. So, that's like their class-based system from what I've researched. And you can travel between the past and the present to unravel the mysteries of this ruined island. And I am a sucker for traveling back and forth. I love Chrono Trigger. I love the past. History is my favorite subject in school, or at least it was my favorite subject. So, I love history and any games that have a good twist on time manipulation or going back in the past or in the future and things like that i'm a sucker for so i'm absolutely looking a lot more forward to this game that at this point Plus, if you're an old fan of the Fantasy Life series, there will be popular characters for that nostalgia sake that will be returning and integrated into the story. So definitely looks like Fantasy Life I is going to be a game to look out for October 10th on the Nintendo Switch. All right, we're in the top 10 here, guys. Let's talk about some epic Mickey rebrushed coming out pretty much on everything that's going to be this year at some point. We got to wait for the final release date. So you can embark on a magical journey in Disney Epic Mickey Rebrushed. Shape your adventure with the stroke of a brush and transform Wasteland as Mickey Mouse in this beautifully recreated 3D platformer. So recreated 3D platformer from the Wii. This is another one of the games, just like Luigi's Mansion, just like some of the other games that have been coming out that are stuck on a platform 
that's old 480p or below old platform and has not been updated for modern systems at all so that's why this is so good because epic mickey was a solid base of a game that had severe limitations and issues now there's some other things with the structure of the game that i hope that they recreate when it comes to the flow and quality of life features but the graphics and the controls were two things that were a little bit of a knock the art style is great but just how it ran how it looked sometimes and how it controlled with the Wii Remote was an issue. But now we're going to be able to play it on a variety of platforms. HD now 2024. So this is fantastic. Because it's a good game. I played it back then. But just had some issues. So I'm looking forward to seeing exactly how everything plays out with Epic Mickey Rebrushed. And if it does well, maybe we finally get that elusive epic mickey 3 maybe somebody tackles it if this game does really well so i'm looking forward to seeing exactly what they do in this game to make it play a lot better from the structure standpoint because if they fix some of the issues there this is a 7 out of 10 game that now becomes like an 8 or 9 out of 10 game because there's some great gameplay to be had in this has fantastic visuals great music there's a lot of charm especially if you grew up with mickey mouse and watched the movies and the shows and all of that so looking forward to seeing exactly how they tackle everything next up at number nine we've got sweet Godin one and two hd remaster it's coming out pretty much on everything a hero's destiny is written in the stars the legendary konami jrpgs sweet code n1 and sweet code n2 have now been remastered in hd and are coming out at some point this year and i'm looking forward to it a lot man because i think sweet code n it's one of those old school jrpgs that i remember seeing it back in the day and i never had a chance to play it and then much later when i could start affording a lot of the games that i buy i was able to finally check it out and play it but i never went through and beat both of the games here so them taking once again old games that are stuck on old hardware especially these old school jrpgs that are so good but maybe more on the niche line so you don't see a lot of games like it and bringing it back into the modern era is once again a great thing and this game has a ton of characters to recruit it's got great jrpg mechanics and battle systems got fantastic music it is a great game and one of the other games that we're going to talk about pretty much next here is based off of this game so it's very good to see this franchise make a comeback in hd and konami do something with all of these great ips that they have they're finally bringing them back with some hd remasters and some collections so definitely a good thing there now next up at number eight is ease 10 nordics this game is looking really good i'm an ease fan i play all the ease games didn't really like ease 9 as much but loved ease 8 and now we got ease 10 nordics coming out at the end of this year explore the islands engage in fast-paced action combat and experience the high season adventures of unlikely allies adal and karja in ease 10 nordics and this game is cool because it breaks it down into two phases that almost reminds me a little bit of skies of arcadia because in that game you had the regular battles that were turn-based but then you also had the ship battles and in this game it's not turn-based it's action rpg but you have the regular battles on land and then you have the ship battles that play out in real time so that cool dynamic between completely different mechanics and systems is going to be a nice balance of the game and keep things a bit fresh they also have a really cool dual battle system between two characters where you can swap on the fly and even do different tag team attacks and have different mechanics that are intertwined between both of the characters for you to attack in unison and tandem with different modes for how you want to play so i love everything that i've seen about east 10 nordics and from the japanese release it seems like japanese gamers really enjoyed it as well so i'm looking forward to experiencing the story and what falcom has for us with east 10 nordics coming out later in the year next up at number seven Eden chronicle 100 heroes i told you guys we're gonna go back to sweet code in style gameplay and this is it made from a lot of people who actually made the sweet code in games back in the day it's coming out for everything april 20 3rd 2024 and Eden Chronicle 100 Heroes is designed to bring players a modern take on a classic JRPG experience so you can get ready to lead 100 plus playable characters through a war torn world only you can save the official description says and yes 
this is a very exciting game because it is that classic sweet code in style it does have that beautiful hd 2d like art style that square enix has perfected and now they're bringing it over in their own style you're going to have a deep battle system with a great camera angle i think the camera angle for the battles is so cool and dynamic i love what they did there which is the classic style but bringing it together with modern mechanics and systems and other things so if you're a classic jrpg fan this is going to fit the bill if you're someone looking to get into classic jrpgs this game is going to be a game that you might want to check out, and I think it's going to be phenomenal. The music already sounds really good from what they've shown off, and it looks like it's going to be a game that's going to have plenty of content and a lot of characters and different areas and locations to explore, so you're going to get your value there as well. Euden Chronicle 100 Heroes, you cannot miss it. That's why I made it into my top 10 here. Next up at number six is Stellar Blade for the PlayStation 5 coming out on April 26, 2024. So this game has a lot to it. The future of humanity hangs in the balance in Stellar Blade, an all new story driven action adventure game. Now, after traveling from the colony, seventh airborne squad member Eve arrives on a desolate remains of our planet with a clear cut mission to save humankind by reclaiming Earth from the Naitiba the malevolent force that has devastated it. But as Eve tackles the Naitiba one by one, piercing together the mysteries of the past and the ruins of human civilization, she realizes that her mission is far from straightforward. In fact, almost nothing is as it seems. And I love these type of weird stories where there's space travel involved and they come back and it's desolate and you got to save humankind. Almost reminds me a little bit of Nier. I'm pretty sure Nier Automata was an inspiration for them, which Nier has been inspired by many different type of like humanity survival stories. We've seen it so many times, but when done well, they're very good. So I'm looking forward to more. So Stellar Blade's going to have a lot of substance to it. It's got the style but i think the game actually has substance within the combat because based off of what people played from that leaked demo that came out early and people got a chance to play it people felt like the game was really good when it comes to the controls and the combat and of course the demo is going to be out for people to play as well if you're not already playing the game too so stellar blade Really looking forward to this game. I think it's going to be a gem on PS5 and a change up from the typical big PS5 exclusives. Next up at number five, Paper Mario, the thousand year door. And honestly, when it comes like to the top five, six, seven, you can interchange these a lot, quite a bit. But Paper Mario is looking really good. And you can join Mario on an epic adventure to collect the crystal stars before the x knots do. The nefarious x knots are after the treasure behind the thousand year door with a map from princess peach and the help of a few locals mario journeys through a colorful world made of paper to find them first to prevail in this quest you'll have to level up mario and his friends master timing based attacks and badges to impress the audience on the stage of combat and make use of all the abilities that come with being cursed or conveniently made of paper-like folding into a plane to cross big gaps or turning sideways to slip through narrow openings. Leap through a storybook world with charming characters in every fold. You gotta love Nintendo and their puns when they talk about their games, but no, Paper Mario the Thousand Year Door is anything but a joke or silly. It is a phenomenal turn-based RPG developed by Intelligent Systems back on the GameCube and once again, I gotta say it, I'll keep on saying it, bring back these GameCube RPGs, these PS2 RPGs, bring them back. They're great. The sixth generation of games, I'll say this now, I'll say it again, is one of the best generation. Games were built with all of the knowledge and experience from the 2D era, from the old school, from potentially even seeing the future of HD games and what was going on there. Sixth gen games were the basis for the modern game template overall from what we've seen. And a lot of the games built in the sixth generation are some of the best built games of all time. A lot of them still hold up today. You can play Paper Mario from back in the day and it's still good now. So to me, that's why this game is so exciting. It's still good two decades later and they're remaking it, recreating it, remastering it, whatever you wanna say to it, they're enhancing it to bring it to a modern platform and it's going to look incredible on the Nintendo Switch OLED or playing on your HD TV. So I'm very excited to check out Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door on May 23rd of this year. Next up at number four is a game called Visions of Mana. And for those who don't know, I've been a huge 
mana fan secret of mana seiken densetsu it is a phenomenal series it's an action rpg series with a very distinct colorful art style but with some very dark themes overall and i've been playing the mana games since the early 90s and it was one of the first rpgs that i played that got me into rpgs overall this is one of the games that i can credit to me actually being a huge fan of rpgs and loving them was the mana series so to see mana finally updated in the modern time with a brand new game we haven't had a new game in decades and here we go visions of mana coming out summer 2024 you can explore a world of elemental spirits and adventure in the latest mana action rpg i'm very excited for this and for those that are wondering oh man there's no nintendo switch version don't worry i think a switch 2 version is coming because there is no mana without a nintendo platform but i'm gonna be picking it up on the ps5 though to be honest i'm gonna pick it up on the ps5 and then i'll probably pick it up on the switch 2 whenever that version comes out because i do think that it's coming but this game is a can't miss game to me i think that it's going to play and look great now don't get me wrong this is not going to be like a 9.5 out of 10 or a 10 out of 10 or like game of the year or anything like that but it's going to be an emotional great visually impressive journey with some fun action adventure combat I feel that the series and the developers have so much passion and charm for what they do it's going to shine through throughout when you play this game so visions of mana looking incredibly good and i cannot wait to play it very soon here it's coming up and next up at number three shin megami tensei 5 vengeance and yes we've played smt5 i get that but this is smt5 plus 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 super edition you have to play it because it's enhanced so much to the point to where it fixes a lot of the stuff from the previous release that people were upset about yeah that should have been the whole title at this point but no june 14th it got moved up a week because they did not want to run into potentially luigi's mansion right afterwards and of course dropping the same day as the elden ring deal so you definitely don't want to be around that and it's coming out for pretty much everything and in this game you embark on this definitive version of the critically acclaimed shin megami tensei 5 massively expanded with a brand new storyline featuring new locations demons and choices to make that will dictate the fate of all existence now some people have been confused about this game and it's essentially a new campaign a new story path jammed into the previous game but with so many alterations and changes to the point to where it's essentially a new game now if you want to play the vanilla smt5 experience on smt5 vengeance you can you can pick that path and you can play that however if you want to play the much better enhanced version of the game with a brand new storyline that fixes so many of the things that were an issue in the original then play shin megami tensei 5 vengeance and pick the new path now they're saying about 60 to 80 hours of brand new story based content in the game with the new path you have brand new characters that are in there that give you more of that feel of having comrades and having team members on your team fight human npcs human characters as well on your team where you can fight and use their demons intertwine with the story to where it's not just you nahobino running around barely talking to anybody and using demons to fight they've intertwined more of a story into the game which was a huge complaint with the original because in the original you had to do a ton of side quests and other things to even get more of the story and even then some people felt that it was lacking and tweak some of the characters that were already around to be on your team and fight as as well so it's going to be a different experience from the vanilla shin megami tensei 5 plus you have the new demons plus you have a bunch of quality of life features you have auto save anywhere and every single demon has a unique attack and has like a triple team or double team type of attacks so there's going to be more incentive to keep certain demons that you like and continue to power them up if you like that demon or if you like their special ability this is a must play that's why it's so high up on this list it's essentially a new game at this point and it's going to to be absolutely incredible especially on ps5 if you're playing it on there it's going to be 4k 60 or it's going to be 60 frames per a second which there was some frame rate issues on the nintendo switch version but i do feel that they could iron out some of those issues and have it run at a solid 30 frames per a second for the switch version of vengeance but we'll have to wait and see on that but yes very excited for this game and it's absolutely a must play for anybody who loves smt or if you love the persona style games that it's definitely something to play next up 
at number two is Deca Police, which is coming out at some point this year. It's been delayed already, coming out at some point. And this is a mysterious detective story with investigations in a virtual world. Deca Police is a crime suspense RPG from level five, developers of the Layton series. The main character, a rookie detective named Harvard, hunts down criminals in a huge open world crime ridden city. Traveling back and forth between physical and virtual reality, look forward to a mysterious detective story with investigations in virtual space. Now, we know that there's going to be a level five vision event that's going to talk about this game more and give us a release date that's coming up in april so i'm excited for that but deca police has a phenomenal art style and level five often like doesn't miss with their games they make incredible titles they do take some time to come out but they're usually some of the most polished games out there they have great art styles really colorful nice very good controls and deca police seems to be one of those games that has a very unique blend of latent right because it was supposed to be a latent game at first and they just transferred formed it into something different and now they're making a completely separate new latent game so me personally i'm excited to be able to experience some of that latent gameplay but actually have it in a brand new ip in an open world action rpg setting where you're going to be doing detective and sleuthing and things like that so i think it's going to be fantastic and even based off of the tokyo game show demo that people played there was hands-on time People said that it was incredible then, and that was last year. So they've got more time to polish it, more time to even make it better on the platforms that it's on. So I'm looking forward to seeing more of Deca Police in the next level five showcase. Now coming in at number one is Metaphor, re Fantasio coming out on pretty much everything. And there is a very good credible source, Midori, that's stating that Metaphor re Fantasio will be coming out on the Nintendo Switch 2. It's coming out this fall, 2024. So the throne sits empty after the King's assassination with no heirs. The will of the late king decrees that the next monarch will be elected by the people. And thus begins your fight for the throne oh my gosh what a nice setup usually you have it to where somebody gets assassinated as the king and then there's already a bloodline and then there's political struggle and power and all of that in politics but now it's you fighting for that throne and leading your people and trying to do something and from what they've shown with the combat why this game is so exciting you have that action and you have turn base combined and mixed together this is something that you don't see very often in rpgs some games do it but i don't think i've seen it when it comes to a modern game in today's time at this level in terms of what atlas is doing because it looks incredible you've got huge open-ended areas where you're slashing up enemies then heading right into turn-based battles fantastic music so far from what they've sampled the art style is completely bizarre and weird but also at the same time looks incredible there are so many great things that I'm seeing so far with Metaphor re Fantasio. This looks like it's going to be a blockbuster of a game and could spearhead the next big atlas sega franchise but especially for atlas because honestly they've been just doing a lot of smt and persona that's been their big ones persona being their biggest when it comes to atlas but i think this game could really rise above based off of what they've shown from the story and the gameplay and the graphics and the music it's all coming together i love that developer diary where they talked about the game and they even seem so confident about this game that it's something spectacular as well so i think it's going to be really good and that's why it's number one on my list but what are your most exciting and anticipated jrpgs and switch games that are coming out let me know in the comment section below all right guys that wraps it up for this video here thank you so much for watching i do appreciate it please make sure you hit that like button subscribe if you are someone new click that notification bell and check out my other nintendo switch and rpg videos right here on screen thanks for watching and we'll catch you guys for the next one peace